In this class, we are going to discuss about introduction of as asynchronous counters. In the last class, the, that means in the introduction of counters, I already introduced about asynchronous counters. That means it is not having a similar clock pulse for each flip flop in that counter. So, see the important points for asynchronous counter. Asynchronous refers to states that does not have a fixed time relationship. That means, uh, for example, as I told you in the last class, for a n bit counter, you may have 2 power n states. So, for asynchronous counter also, if that is a n bit counter, it may have 2 power n state. Each state in asynchronous counter cannot have a fixed time relationship. That means, if you are having some 4 states for a 2 bit counter, so, that 4 states 1, 2, 3, 4 say these are the 4 states for a 2 bit counter. So, then this states may, state may occur 5 minutes, next state may occur 4 minutes and next state may occur in 3 minutes like that. There is no fixed time relationship because we are not using a similar clock pulse. Clock pulse means clock duration. So, Clock duration is going to change means uh, state also going to uh, vary that means the state timing is also going to vary. And next coming to the second point in asynchronous counters flip flops does not have a common clock pulse. So, their states does not change exactly at same time. So, asynchronous counter is not having similar clock pulse means obviously asynchronous counter means integration of flip flops. So, it is not having similar clock pulse means we are not giving similar clock pulse for each flip flop. So, their states whatever output are there, whatever each flip flop output is there that is not going to change at a time. So, in previous classes if you observe shift register there we take in common clock pulse. What we are doing there? We are ready with inputs and whenever clock pulse is occurred, so all flip flops are switching to their output. All flip flops is uh, transferring their data to output according to the conditions given. That is the thing we done up to now. But as we are not giving similar clock pulse here, so each flip flop is not giving output uh, in same time. For example, in one clock pulse, first flip flop given output means second flip flop may give or may not. So, because we are not using similar clock pulse there for a particular clock edge. So, each flip flop is not providing output only any one flip flop will provide for a particular clock edge that is the meaning. So, and second thing we are having a the third point is first flip flop has block, uh, clock. So, here as I told you flip flops are not having similar clock then how we will give a clock pulse? Uh, we are using any different clock generators for each flip flop? No. So, just for example, so as I told you, counter is interconnection of flip flops like this. So, we are interconnecting flip flops and uh, I will give you that connection in next classes while we are going with uh, uh, flip flop, uh, so counter um, design. So, there I will uh, tell you how we need to design with flip flops. So, now for example, these are the flip flops, this is a 3 bit counter say. So, we are having interconnection. What we are saying is all these 3 flip flops are not having similar clock pulse if this is a asynchronous counter. Then how you are giving clock pulse to each and every flip flop without clock pulse? So, these flip flops are not going to run. Definitely we need to provide uh, clock pulse and different clock pulse to make this as asynchronous counter. Then where from where you are giving that clock pulse every time for example, if you are having any n bit asynchronous counter, you cannot you can't give from n clock generators, you cannot use n clock generators to design a n bit asynchronous counter that will give you a bulky circuit. So, how we are giving that different clock pulse means whatever we are giving as a clock so that for first flip flop we are providing clock pulse whatever the output of that first flip flop is there that will acts as clock for second and second flip flop output will acts as clock for third like that each flip flop output will acts as clock signal for the next flip flop uh, third flip flop 
output will act as clock for fourth like that it will drives n flip flops so only first flip flop in asynchronous counter will have clock signal so next onwards second flip flop onwards it may have clock from the previous flip flop output so here you can say you are using different clock pulse means uh, so here output may vary from this clock and here output may vary from this and from this so asynchronous is satisfying and we are not using so many clock generators here so like this you are going to design asynchronous counters in the next classes that means the main example of one of the uh, asynchronous counter is ripple counter for, uh, for example, if anyone asked you design a ripple counter, ripple counter is nothing but asynchronous counter and that you need to consider flip flops with single clock to first flip flop and next onwards you need to give output of each flip flop to next flip flop as a clock signal. So ripple counter is a one of the best asynchronous counter and then one important point uh, for you is uh, for any counter design maximum you are going to use JK flip-flop or T flip-flop which is in toggle condition toggle conditioned JK flip-flop or T flip-flop we are going to take how we will make that toggle condition JK flip-flop so uh, we will make use of uh, JK flip-flop in toggle condition means every time you are giving so high voltage to JK that means so a fixed line will be there in the next circuits what we are going to design in that I am going to draw a high, high voltage line which is connecting to both JK or if you take a T flip flop we are connecting that high voltage line to T that means if you connected a high voltage line to JK it means it implies we are giving JK as 1 1 high voltage means in digital 1 1. So, as we are giving 1 1 to JK flip flop it obviously uh, in so uh, toggle condition whatever previous output is there when clock is occurred it is going to toggle that is it. When already we are making flip flops in toggle condition whenever clock pulse occur whatever previous output is there present state is there that is going to toggle every time for every clock pulse these flip flops are going to toggle. So, main points you need to keep in mind about asynchronous counter is we are not giving similar clock pulse for flip flops integrated in that counter. Uh, where, from where we are giving that different clock pulses means we are not using so many generators only first flip flop is having clock from next flip flop onwards it will takes the previous flip flop output as clock signal. So next final point so that is output of each flip flop will act as clock for count, uh, counter and uh, example is a ripple counter and whatever the flip flops we are using in this asynchronous uh, counters those must be in toggle mode that means you may take jk flip flop or t flip flop so other flip flops you can't take that means sr and d you can't take because they they won't have any toggle condition that's why we are going to use jk and t that is also in toggle condition mode we are going to take in the next classes we will design asynchronous uh, ripple counter so uh, pl please make sure about these points to uh, get cleared in that topic